broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations. Next on Hikino, stories from across the island chain. I would kiss my mom goodbye every night, knowing that I could die that night and I'd come back, come back in a body bag. A former nightclub bouncer turns his life around and inspires his students to do the same. Plus, Waihana's iconic family-run store is still going strong after more than a century. Also, a young woman gets a close shave to lend moral support to children with cancer. Learn five tips on how to make friends and find out how to build a traditional Hawaiian salt bed. Meet a teacher whose Peace Corps experience in Fiji changed his life forever. And a young business school graduate helps to save his uncle's historic crack seed business. All in this episode of Hikino, coming to you from Wailua High and Intermediate School on Oahu, home of the Bulldogs. That's next on the nation's first statewide student news network, Hikino. Can do! In 2005, Wailua High School rededicated the football field, Toshi Nakasone Field. Toshiyuki Toshi Nakasone was a high school record-setting coach at Wailua High School. His football coaching career spent 10 years all of Wailua, and seven of his teams posted winning records from 1949 to 1958. Wailua High School won four consecutive football titles from 1952 to 55. Toshi was also selected as coach of the year three times. Toshi was a coach and a teacher. He encouraged excellence in academics as well as sports. He quit coaching in 1959 to become a school administrator. In 1979, he was inducted into the Wailua High School Football Hall of Honor. Our first story takes us to Iolani School in Oahu, where students tell the story of a coach who went to the dark side before seeing the light. Three shots and three hits. That's how Dominic Ahuna imagined his life ending if he continued on the path he had taken working as a bouncer in clubs where crime and violence were commonplace. I would kiss my mom goodbye every night, knowing that I could die that night and I'd come back, come back in a body bag. After graduating from Iolani, Don Mahuna was playing collegiate football at the University of Puget Sound when his father died in 1995. He gave up his football scholarship after his sophomore year to work three jobs to help his family. Basically, he was my coach, so when I stopped playing, when I lost him, and I stopped playing football, I just kind of lost my identity, and that's how I ended up, um, you know, just kind of wandering. Eventually, he fell into the nightclub business, working as a bouncer in three of the largest clubs in Hawaii. Many of his associates are now in jail. Drug dealers would frequent our clubs. Um, they would pay me, they would literally shake my hand with two or three hundred dollar bills to, uh, to block a door while they would take people in the back and do transactions. You know, so I basically made three, three, three hundred dollars in two minutes. A potentially deadly confrontation with a drug dealer awoke him to the reality of his lifestyle. The drug dealer and his gang waited outside the club for him one night, hoping to follow him home. And I had hung out with criminals long enough that I knew what he was doing. He was trying to follow me home to see who I lived with because they wanted to hurt my family members. See, criminals are smart. They know that you know, it's not enough just to hurt you physically, but if they can hurt someone you love, that causes more of an impact. Knowing this, Ahuna drove across the island and lost his pursuers in Nanakuli. Arriving back at his home in Makiki at 6 a.m., Ahuna says he heard the voice of God telling him that he had to change. Basically, I, was, I had parked my car and he had spoke to me and he said, you know, if you don't change what you're doing, you're going to be there within a year. And it's almost like a movie played out right in front of my face. I couldn't stop it and I could see it. And it was, I saw myself and I saw two or three guys um, and I had pulled a, I pulled a weapon out of my waistband and at the same time I pulled the weapon out. These guys had their guns out and they had shot me three times. This vision of where his life was heading made Ahuna change his path. He returned to his faith, to football, and to his alma mater, accepting a position as the strength and conditioning coach at Iolani in 2003. Since then, Coach Dom has become a cornerstone on campus. Along with helping athletes physically, Coach Dom also founded the Iolani Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which gathers once a week for an inspirational service. And he's just an older brother who's showing me the ways. He's 
been through so much more than, than I have. And um, I know that I'll definitely encounter things that he has encountered. Over 100 students attend these meetings, which often have guest athletes coming in to speak, such as former UH football player and world's strongest man competitor, Joe Onasai. Yeah, I mean, basically in a nutshell, whatever they dream for their life, if they stay open to God, he can write their story better than they ever imagined. And that's what he's done for me. I didn't imagine I'd ever be in this place where I am right now. This was never part of my goal or my dream. But once I opened my life to God and I let him take control, he's taken me places beyond what I ever envisioned for myself. And he can do the same thing for them. This is David Pang from Eolani School reporting for Hiki No. We're back on the north shore of Oahu at the famous bridge that crosses the Anahulu Stream. Anahulu Bridge, also known as Rainbow Bridge, is one of the most recognized landmarks in Haleiwa. Built in 1921, the bridge was originally designed by Frank Orth and Guy Rothwell and created with concrete. The Anahulu Bridge replaced the original wooden bridge. It crosses 161 feet over the Anahulu Stream. Anahulu Stream is the longest water course on Oahu. Today, the Rainbow Bridge is a landmark on the National Historic Register. Many tourists stop to see the bridge each year and to visit the restaurants and shops that are on each side. Anahulu Stream is also a popular spot for stand-up paddling and kayaking, with many paddlers passing underneath the bridge on their way up the river or toward the ocean. Our next story takes us to Mid-Pacific Institute on Oahu, where students tell the tale of an intergenerational business success. It kind of started as a childhood dream in a crack seed store. I would go there every chance I had, expressing from my heart every single time, I want to own this store someday. For decades, Clay Chang, a man known by most Aina Haina residents as Uncle Clay, was the sole proprietor of iconic crack seed store, Do Feng. As I got older, I started to really realize what was so special about that shop. Clay's nephew, Bronson Chang, was one of many customers who frequented Do Feng for more than just its products. You know, it was Uncle Clay's pure aloha that he shared with everyone uh, and his simple philosophy of really seeing and treating everyone as ohana. But Clay's childhood dream could not last forever. In 2008, his business was heavily affected by the economic downturn. So this shopping center was hit really, really hard. We started from that point going downhill real fast to prevent it from completely sinking. So my nephew, he came and said, he begged me, could I, could I help you, Uncle Clay? As a student of University of Southern California's business school, Bronson was not ready to let his uncle's dream die. That passion of mine combined with seeing you know, Uncle Clay and what he was doing and really uh, what I saw was just an amazing place but was as a business really uh, struggling. When I was a freshman in college I came home for the summer and I asked Uncle Clay, how can I help you? Utilizing a web-based fundraising technique known as crowdfunding, Clay and Bronson raised over $60,000 to recreate Dofeng as a modern and sustainable business. Really, um, we worked with a company called ProFounder, raised uh, about over $60,000, which is a majority of the funds that we needed to build the house. The product of innovative business strategies and old school warmth and hospitality, Uncle Clay's House of Pure Aloha looks as though it's here to stay. This is Autumn Simone from Mid Pacific Institute for Hikino. If you'd like to comment on the story or anything you see on Hikino, join the discussion at facebook.com slash hikinokandu or send us a tweet at twitter.com slash hikinokandu. We're back in Wailua on the North Shore side of Oahu where students in Wailua High and Intermediate School are working together in harmony. Mr. Kablay became the band director in 2010 when the band only had 17 students. Today, the band program has grown to over 160 students who want to learn what music is all about. The band enters music festivals every year, including the Hawaii Music Festival, and earn a Division I rating from judges the highest rating possible. 
Last year, Ben's students also made a trip to Disneyland in California to participate in Disney's Magic Music Days, where they had the opportunity to watch a performance at the Disney Concert Hall. Students in band also learn to respect their teachers and others, and to have responsibility for their practice times and for their work in and out of school. The goal of the band program is for students to get more in touch with their music abilities and to become a better person for their parents, teachers, and themselves. Today, the band program has grown to over 160 students who want to learn what music is all about. We travel now to Kauai where students from Kapa'a Middle School offer us tips on how to receive one of life's most valuable gifts. Here are five tips all about how to make great friends. First, always be yourself. Never try to be someone you're not. That could end badly. Second, you shouldn't be shy when meeting new people. If you ask to sit down next to someone new, the worst thing they could say is no. But don't worry because they will usually say yes. Third, don't show off too much because you don't want to make people feel bad at doing something. Fourth, remember to always treat people how you want to be treated. Finally, you should be organized. If people see how neat and clean you are, they will know you as an organized person. We're back on the North Shore of Oahu at the mouth of Waimea River. Millions of years ago, the river formed Waimea Valley, joining the oceans to form Waimea Bay. Waimea means red water in Hawaiian. When Kamehameha took over the island of Oahu in 1795, Waimea Valley was a large settlement with an almost constant water source, abundant fishing ground, and cultivation of traditional food. Waimea Valley was a classic example of Hawaiian managing natural sources. The valley remained an important spiritual destination and agriculture center until the 19th century when government intervention and industrial influences changed the valley. Today, Waimea Valley is a historical nature park including botanic gardens with 6,000 types of plants, 400 which are threatened or endangered. Our next story takes us to St. Francis on Oahu, where a science teacher recounts an experience that changed his life forever. Before becoming an integral part of the St. Francis Ohana, biology teacher David Rockholm spent two years in Fiji through the Peace Corps. His time there proved life-changing as his experience gave him much more knowledge than he could have ever hoped for. I decided to join the Peace Corps. I was in college and I, I kind of knew I wanted to continue on um, for, for a doctorate, but I just didn't want to stay in school straight through. So I thought I would take, try to apply some of the things I had been learning um, overseas. And Peace Corps seemed to be the best way to, to experience um, another, another culture just to experience. I really did, wasn't expecting to get anything out of it. Um, I was just told that Peace Corps is the toughest job you'll ever love, and I really did. I, it, was a, it was tough, but it was, it was, it was great. Fiji is kind of, is, is multicultural. I mean, there's, there's half his native um, island population, and then half is um, Indian. And so some of made, made a number of friends that, are, that were Indian. Um, and it was just so different for me. I mean, I was a city guy, um, and moving to Fiji was very different. You know, I was in the country, different language, different culture. Um, lived in a thatched house for a couple years, no running water and all that. But so did everyone I was living with. And um, they, they really made it possible for me to enjoy the experience and to, to thrive at, at it. I was teaching at a school that was just expanding. So it was like a grade school and they were trying to um, add the high school. So I was the first high school biology teacher. And um, we, didn't, we didn't have much supplies. So we would do field trips to the beach. Um, we were, I remember one time we made soap in, the, in this um, large lab, but the lab didn't have any um, mineral spirit burners or Bunsen burners. So we just essentially built some campfires on the lab, uh, lab tables with um, some corrugated iron between the lab benches so we didn't burn the table itself. 
made some fires, heated up the coconut oil, because there was a lot of that, and um, added some sodium hydroxide, and we made soap. During this exciting phase of his life, David Rockholm also met his wife, Lita, and have now been married for 27 years. I met Matalita at, um, she was a teacher at the, the same school where I was located in the Asawas, and being on, on the island of Naviti, we just spent a lot of time uh, together with the other teachers and students. It was a boarding school. Um, so we got to know each other well, and I realized that two years in Fiji, I wanted, I wanted to bring back um, the most important you know, part of my life. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we got married in Fiji, and, and we came back together. It, it really lived up to all I was hoping for. This is Antonio Maluyo from St. Francis School for Hikino. We're back at Wailua High and Intermediate School where students and faculty have a renewed school spirit thanks to their freshly painted football scoreboard. For many years, the football scoreboard was in a state of disrepair with rust and burnout bulbs. The scoreboard received much needed renovation from the Wailua Parent Seat SCORE Committee, which focuses on supporting education and helping the community. Work began on July 31st and was completed by August 10th. An effort led by Wailua Parent Seed resident painter Koji Price. Koji Power washed the entire structure and then applied a new coat of paint to the side poles and front and back of the scoreboard. New letters were applied, blown bulbs were replaced, and new screens were made and installed. The next goal for the Wailua Parent Seed SCORE committee is to partner with the athletic department to help with the fundraising activities that will generate the funds needed to purchase a brand new digital scoreboard. Our next story takes us to Eva Makai Middle School on Oahu, where students tell of a young woman who set vanity aside to lend moral support to children in need. Karen Mims isn't your average teenage girl. While most girls care about their appearance, Karen focuses her energy caring about children specifically children with cancer. Her caring for children inspired her to shave her head and fundraise money to raise awareness for cancer children. What she did is what most girls would never consider doing. For the St. Baldrick's, um, it was a one-day event. The money is donated to cancer research and it is also donated to families who need financial help. So several children with cancer is going to be able to benefit from the money I fundraised. Being a military child, having somebody deployed, I know what it's like to feel hurt and lonely sometimes, and that's what um, cancer children feel. So I did. I wanted them to feel like they're not alone, and that their future is brighter for them. And I also wanted to work um, or volunteer for something that had to deal with children, because children are basically our future. I shaved my head basically because I wanted to like tell the cancer children that they shouldn't feel alone or hurt because there's always somebody there for them and there's always a brighter future. And I wanted to spread the message about childhood cancer and how it does kill. I really gained confidence and self-esteem because it's not every day you see a girl with no hair. So going out, it made me more confident in myself and now I have more self-esteem than I did before. By focusing her emotions, Karen turned something negative into something positive, gaining confidence, self-esteem, and a new outlook on life in the process. This is Lauren Kate from Eva Makai Middle School for Hikino. We're back in Wailua on the North Shore of Oahu, former home of the world's best sugar. The Wailua Sugar Mill is a historic sugar refinery located at the base of the Waianae Mountains in the town of Wailua. In 1898, Castle and Cook formed the Wailua Agriculture Company and purchased the plantation. They built a new mill at the first crop was harvested in 1899, producing 1,741 tons of sugar. By 1906, Castle and Cook made more improvements, such as a railway system, expanded acreage, and irrigation systems. Wailua Plantation also co-generated electricity to sell to local communities, contributing a small percentage to Hawaii's energy production. After running for almost 100 years, the sugar mill closed down in October 1996 due to profit concerns. 
It was the last sugar plantation on the island of Oahu. The only remnants of this town's agricultural heritage are the smokestacks still standing at the old mill in the center of town and a large wooden sign proclaiming Wailua as the home of the world's best sugar. We take you now to the island of Kauai, where students at Waimea Canyon Middle School show us how to build a traditional Hawaiian salt bed. Before contact with the Europeans, Hawaiian households made their own salt by evaporating seawater. To this day, people of Hawaiian ancestry continue this process of producing Hawaiian salt passed down from generation to generation for hundreds of years. We will now show you how to make a salt bed. The first step in making a successful salt bed is to use a piece of metal and scrape the excess red mud to get the black mud. Make sure you do not scrape too hard or the bed will be too deep. Then rub the area with a round rock to make it smooth. Next, get some black clay. Make sure it's not too runny or too dry. Take the black mud and form it into balls. Now begin to form a wall. Line them up next to each other and make a shape like a tube. Then fill up the bed almost to the top with salt water. The saltier the water, the more salt it will produce. It will take about two weeks for the salt to form. Now you can begin harvesting. You must have the proper tools, a screen on a stick, a colander, and a big barrel. First, grab the screen on a stick. Begin dragging the stick towards you very gently so you only get the white salt on top. Pick up the salt with your hands. Place it in the colander and begin to rinse it in the salt water. Lastly, dry the salt in the sun for about one week. Then your salt is ready. We're back on campus at Wailua Haiyan Intermediate School where the Hawaiian kids are recognized as one of the world's top robotics teams. The robotics program was started in 1999 and continues to be run by engineer and project director Glenn Lee. Team number 359, also known as the Hawaiian Kids, has a long history as an award-winning team. Last year, the Hawaiian Kids joined the world's top 352 robotics teams, representing 29 countries at the first robotics world championship in St. Louis. Wailua was one of the six high school teams representing Hawaii at the championships. Wailua High School's robotics team was awarded the program's most prestigious prize, the Chairman's Award. The Hawaiian kids won two regional competitions last year, one in Indiana and one in Utah, and also received the Motorola Quality Award and Engineering Excellence Award, and have earned a place in the FRC League Hall of Fame. Our final story takes us to Hana K-12 school on Maui, where students show us how family and community are essential to the survival of their town's iconic store. Hana is known for being one of a kind, and the Hasigawa General Store is surely that. It has benefited the people of Hana for over 100 years. You know, we're like a general store, so we, can, we sell stuff from nuts and bolts to soup to gas cans to apples and oranges to ice cream, beer, and t-shirts. The store was started back in 1910 with my grandfather and his brother. Learning about the store experience is something that was almost in you because you started working as soon as you can start walking. <laughs> the family was brought up inside the store and you had a crib in there, my mother was there changing diapers there. So it was a, lift, a, a different style of life. Though this store has a rich generational history, it has had its share of trials. Tragedy struck in 1989 when the store completely burned to the ground. I was living back at my parents' house at that time and Bill Church came um, knocking at our door at like 4.30 in the morning. He says, hey, you guys' store is burning down. And sure enough, you know, you could even smell the smoke in Hamoa, of all places. So we went over to, to look at the story. It was all gone by that time. The investigation concluded that the cause of the fire was assumed to be arson. And so I, I felt really hurt that someone would do this to us. 
Um, but after a while, I kind of came to the conclusion that, you know what, you let the police do their investigation and you have to let go of those, those feelings because otherwise you're going to be bitter your whole life. So it's, it's, it, it got better as the years went by. I give a lot of credit to the owners of the Hunter Ranch at that time and the hotel because they said, hey, use whatever building you'd like to use. And we ended up choosing the theater, which was, you know, they didn't have to do that and which was a real nice part about them. And then we become their competitors too. <laughs> and now 24 years after the fire, the family plans to rebuild the store at its original location. The original store, uh, this used to be the main entrance right over here. And, um, uh, in the next uh, year or so, we're gonna be planning to rebuild the store. And basically this will be part of the new store and the parking is going to be on the, the Hana side of the property. The old yet well-known store of Hana continues to benefit the community, which is looking forward to the store's return to its original location. This is Pu'ili Kake from Hana School for Hikino. We're back on the North Shore of Oahu at the Vans HIC Pro. Held at Sunset Beach, the HIC Pro is the official qualifier for the Vans Triple Crown of Surfing. The Vans Triple Crown of Surfing is held each winter on the North Shore. Running for over 30 years, the Triple Crown is the world's premier series of professional big wave surfing events and features the world's top ranked surfers. The Triple Crown, first held in 1983, is a collection of three association of surfing professionals contests. Reef Hawaiian Pro at Ali'i Beach in Haleiwa, Vans World Cup of Surfing at Sunset Beach, and Billabong Pipe Masters at Bonsai Pipeline. Each winter, the competitions draw the sport's best athletes as they compete for the world title. The Triple Crown's final stage, the Billabong Pipe Masters, is the grand finale of the ASP World Tour, which crowns the new world surfing champion. Well, that's all we have time for in this episode of Hikino. We'll be back next week with more stories that were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We enjoyed sharing these stories with you and hope you learned something new. Don't forget to tune in for next week's episode and more proof that Hawaii students Hikino. Can do! Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. And HMSA, helping Hawaii's youth and their families stay healthy today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. HMSA, trusted for generations.